Hey everybody, a very warm welcome to the show. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this week I'm coming to you from stunning Razel Khaimah, or RAC as we refer to it fondly, here in the UAE. We're attending RAC's Fine Arts Festival, showcasing local and international talent in the fields of photography, art and film. The idea was that we are combining old meets and new. A little bit later on, we'll conjure up a story about a community of magicians and illusionists who are looking to make a name for themselves in the Middle East. But first, here's the lowdown on a festival spotlighting creative Emirati and expatriate artists. Referring to its location at the northernmost part of the UAE, the Emirate of Rav al Khaimah translates from the Arabic to mean the top of the tent. It's much loved for its scenic beaches, desertscape and imposing mountain range, and they have provided a suitably dramatic backdrop for the Rack Fine Arts Festival since 2013. The event's aim is to enrich and elevate the cultural development of the Emirate, and it boasts a two-month-long calendar of workshops, screenings, walking tours and exhibitions. The newest chapter in the festival's history is a large-scale outdoor gallery in an abandoned pearling village from the 1960s called Al Jazeera Al Hamra. And visitors are free to explore its traditional homes, constructed from stone, seashells and millions of coral pieces. Inspired toured the area and found out more about the festival's offerings from Sukrat bin Bisha. Sukrat, it's so lovely to meet you. Thank you for having us here in Rak. Samwise, thank you for being here. Tell me a little bit about the festival. It has many unique aspects, so what are they? We can see a very incredible uh, percentage of submissions every year, uh, with the, especially if we can say local artists and uh, in the GCC in general. So we think that we have to be this uh, the support of, you know, we have to be that, that bridge, you know, between the artist and the audience. The unique aspect is that this festival is in the uh, old village of Al Jazeera Al Hamra. It's a very unique village. And the idea was that we are combining old meets and new. Uh, we have more than 160 art pieces uh, distributed around the village. There are quite a few art festivals in the United Arab Emirates. What does it say about the wider strategy of the Emirate, of RAC? Why is art becoming more important? The movement of arts uh, in the United Arab Emirates has become a very important uh, you know, subject. Uh, first of all, uh, touristically wise. And uh, this attracts a lot of people, especially if I will talk about Ras Al Khaimah. This wonderful, unique, uh, you know, buildings, the heritage lifestyle. And imagine if you put art in between those things, you know, you're going to create such a wonderful scenery for the uh, visitors and also for the Emiratis, the young generations. How big do you want this to get? What are your ambitions? So I want to concentrate on the on the on the base subject you know like to have more workshops to have like music bands uh, we're going to introduce music more into this festival as soon as we finish in april we're going to start planning for next year 2021 it's been a pleasure shukran jazeera thank you very much thank it's you so pleasure. much Interpreting this year's theme of connected communities was emirati artist nessa al shehi whose interactive piece was titled who am i Placing bark from palm trees in one container and local sand in another, she encouraged visitors to put the materials in one of three boxes, depending on their mindset. Most people opted for the vessel marked, I may disagree, but I respect you. Nessa told Inspire she wasn't particularly surprised by the way in which people expressed their sense of community and open-mindedness. Talk to me about your piece. It's pretty standout, it's pretty complicated, so tell me about the essence and meaning behind it. The idea was inspired by Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, the founder of uh, the United Arab Emirates approach in tolerance, accepting others and the coexistence. Um, even like respecting others, even if there, the, the other people are not coming from the uh, same culture or background as we do. There are like three boxes as the main um, artwork and each one is reflecting um, uh, a specific type uh, of, uh, of people. So people will use the carp or the, the sand from the desert, take one of them and then put it on the, the, the box that 
reflect their ideas or beliefs or who are they exactly. With regards to nature, you love being inspired by the nature and the landscape of the That's UAE, right. but also using materials that mm -hmm. come from it organically. Tell me more about how you did that. Nature has its own language and we are humans living on this earth. I think it's very important to hear the sound of nature and to just give a little bit of more attention to, to the beauty of its, its details. Um, for me, um, I always try my best to choose an element, a natural em element that is very famous in the UAE, but at the same time, we are locals are used to see it. Talk to me about pursuing art as a career, because it's unconventional, if I may be so bold to say that, for an Emirati young lady to follow art as a career. Was it a challenge with your family? At the beginning, it was a challenge because uh, art in the region wasn't like very famous. So I had to prove to my family and to society that um, art can be a career for, for us as the locals. There is a lot of support from the government, from the society, um, and they're understanding and appreciating art more if I want to compare it um, with, with, with uh, like 10 years ago. Sparking creativity in local residents throughout the festival were workshops teaching them to do everything from clay sculpting to abstract painting. And these interactive sessions saw Emirati art enthusiast Hamama al Shehi guiding children and adults in putting their own vision of outer space onto canvas. I hope you're getting this mahe because Hamama and I are creating a masterpiece. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. <laughs> And who knows, as the festival continues to grow in the coming years, perhaps one of these budding talents might see their work hung alongside more established artists in Ras al-Khaimah. From fine art, we now turn our attention to the illusionary arts and a group of performers and magicians who are looking to legitimize their craft. Salim Saeed stepped on stage in Dubai to bring us this report. Making something out of nothing is what aspiring professional magician Suhail al Bastaki excels at. The 28-year-old Emirati practices manipulation magic, a branch of the illusionary arts that plays with light and hidden gadgets to create a dramatic performance. Audiences in his country, he says, are surprised to see an Emirati magician as some in the region associate the craft with mysticism and the dark arts. As soon as they see my magic day and sleight of hand, they would say that it's a black magic. And it has really nothing to do with this. This is all about skills and it's all about practicing. Suhail has been developing his skills for the past eight years. Trained in South Korea, he practices at least seven hours a day and performs at theaters across the UAE. While Middle East magicians are not common, Emerging from the conservative kingdom of Saudi Arabia and onto the world stage is the illusionist Mamdouh al Marzouki, known publicly as the Great Mumdo. In 2013, he received the Merlin Award, the Oscars equivalent for magic. When he started performing in 2010, the former brand manager says he would only entertain at private parties. Yet that changed as Saudi Arabia began to liberalize its cultural offerings in recent years. At one performance in Jeddah, he made a helicopter appear out of nowhere which took him about a year to perfect. Mumdu says it's not about the size of the act, but connecting with people by defying their sense of reality, even with a simple card trick. Such demonstrations have helped audiences in the kingdom be more accepting of performers like himself. Now I'm much more uh, relaxed when I'm telling people that, you know, I'm a magician. Before, you know, 10 years ago, I was a little bit nervous telling people that you know, I was a magician, because people would just, you know, disappear. And as the kingdom and other countries in the region are opening up to the idea of magic and other creative arts, performance communities in the UAE are becoming more visible. And they've banded together to support, protect, and learn from one another, meeting up once every other week. Both seasoned and aspiring entertainers gather here at the home of Flo to showcase their talents and share stories of work challenges they face. Launched almost seven years ago, the creative community of ribbon dancers, flow artists, and light wielders now has around 40 members. One of its founders is Dutch Tunisian Salina Baku, a yoga instructor turned professional hula hooper who is able to spin around 30 rings at a time. Salina is also a contortionist and not afraid to play with fire, saying that while the life of a performer can be financially unstable, 
A nine-to-five job is too mundane. When you get amazing energy from the audience, it is one of the nicest feelings in the world. Honestly, there's, that's what drives me, is going there and seeing the audience really happy and giving a killer show. Replacing talent agents who can charge a hefty fee, many of these performers rely on mobile apps to do the same job, which provides greater contract transparency so users don't have to chase employers to get paid. An issue magician and fire flow dancer of 10 years, Suhail Khouri, knows all too well, prompting him to develop an app guaranteeing performers a next day payment. There wasn't any real transparency on what the market price for each act was, you know, so people would try to rip you off, like pay you less while making a ton of money off you. That's one of the main needs that I felt um, needed to be fulfilled. With his tech solution, Suhail is giving back to the home of Flow community, which is celebrating one of its last gatherings ever, as the permanent residents of the house are moving out. But this won't stop the band of brothers and sisters from supporting one another, members say, from dawn until dusk. Well, now that we have painted a picture for you of Razel Hamer's art scene, there's just time for me to leave you with some artistic, inspiring Instagram posts that we especially liked this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Illusionist Raimi from Lebanon floated this magical idea with his social media fans. Oh, you saw the video post? <laughs> and Turkish-Bulgarian Elise loved how this historical village in Razokhema was transformed into an alfresco gallery.